Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop, Drawer Making. This is a traditional dovetail drawer. Not only does it look fantastic, but it's extremely well engineered and it'll last for generations. If you're interested in learning how to do this, stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. If you're going to talk about drawer making, then first question is going to be, what makes a good drawer? So if we take this out and have a look. Obviously, you want it to be solid construction. You don't want things to twist or bend. You want it to stay, hold its shape. At the same time, you have to allow for seasonal expansion and contraction of the wood. That all has to be built into it. This, I consider this to be the very best in drawer making. I was taught this by Alan Peters. And Alan Peters, in my opinion, was the best designer craftsman of the last century. And these are using techniques that have been around for hundreds of years. And it's the reason why furniture that was built two or 300 years ago is still alive today to be called antiques. And if you want your furniture to survive, then pay attention to some of these techniques, employ them, and your great-great-grandchildren will get to enjoy it. I use a hand-cut half-blind dovetails in the front. Half-blind simply means you don't see it from this side. You only see it from this side where you see the tails. On the back, you have what are called through dovetails. You see both the ends of the tails and the ends of the pins. The bottom is solid wood held in a groove on three sides, but allowed to move seasonally. You have to pay attention to the grain direction because of that. And you got to use appropriate materials. You want materials that are stable, that aren't going to move excessively, and that are going to work well together because in this case, there are three different species of wood. Okay, there are five pieces, not including the knob, that make up a drawer. So your front is typically going to be the prettiest of the bunch. In this case, it's black walnut. And I try to always match up the grain. If I can, I try to use one wide piece cut three times, or um, we've got techniques where we can take one piece and split it multiple times and then glue a thin piece onto each drawer so it has beautiful continuity top to bottom. Whatever, you want your drawer front to be attractive and typically it's going to be the finished piece. Your drawer sides, there's two of those and these need to be made out of, oh, by the way, that needs to be, if you're going to do half blind dovetails, you're probably going to want to stay on the thick side of three quarter. Now, this one is 7 eighths, but it's not down to final dimension. It'll probably end up being somewhere around 13 16 What that allows for, I like to have nice elongated pins and tails. I don't like them when they're short and stubby. They look too machine made. And your end lap out here needs to be appropriately thick. Usually it needs to be about an eighth of an inch on a real hard wood. You can get away with a little bit less. But I like the elegant look that is provided when it's on the thinner side of an eighth of an inch as opposed to thicker. So in this case, walnut on the front, it's probably going to finish out at 13 sixteenths. On the sides, you're going to want a, uh, a secondary wood. Typically, if you're going to hand dovetail them, you want it to show nicely. So as soon as you open the drawer, you see that dovetail. So I like to use a blonde wood. Poplar's a good choice. The only downside to poplar is that it oxidizes and doesn't turn out to be the prettiest. So there's a piece of poplar that hasn't oxidized. It's green and the heartwood, blonde on the outside, but that's what it turns into with a little bit of exposure to light. So not the prettiest wood you can choose. If you stick with strictly sapwood, it tends to be white, but it also starts to get a little bit gray too. So, okay, not my number one choice, but it's all right. You want this to be dry. Preferably, it would be quarter sawn. This isn't. If you can find quarter sawn lumber, that's going to be the most stable of the bunch. And final thickness, I like to keep them thin. One of the big advantages of having a dovetail front and back is the dovetail is going to prevent, is going to hold this piece of wood nice and firmly. It's not going to allow it to cup or bow. So you can get away with thin drawer sides. These are thicker than I would prefer. I think this is coming in at about 7 16, actually it's half an inch. I could get away with 7 16 maybe even closer to 3 eighths of an inch. 
It makes for a nice light drawer and I think it just has a very elegant look when you open it up. So I would allow for my drawer size to eventually be down on a case this size, somewhere around 7 16 of an inch. The backs, what I was going to tell you, is typically going to be made out of the same wood as the sides. I like to keep my back a little bit thicker than the sides and the reason is the thicker the back is, the more surface area you have in here, the stronger the joint's going to be. And again, I like to have that elongated pin that just stretches out the dovetail. I think it looks better, but that's certainly uh, just a personal preference. And the final piece is going to be, uh, by the way, the uh, back in this case is probably going to come in at about 5 eighths of an inch. That's 11 16, so by the time that's finished, it'll be 5 eighths of an inch. The bottom, I like to, I, I wouldn't argue with someone that wants to use plywood on the bottom. It's a nice stable product, but I prefer to do it the traditional way. So whenever I build drawers, uh, furniture grade drawers, I prefer to use a solid wood bottom. This is native cedar, which has a nice smell, very light wood. You don't want your drawers to weigh a ton. The idea is make them as light as possible and strong as possible so that it'll hold the contents. Nobody wants to pull open a drawer that weighs 50 pounds by itself. And it'll, it'll uh, lessen the wear too if it's a little bit lighter. So pine is a good choice in the bottom. Any of the cedars. Um, final dimension. On a drawer that size where it's going to be captured on three sides and secured, in this case twice into the back, by the way, that sits in a groove, so it allows for that movement, but that'll all be explained a little bit later. So something that size, I think you could easily work with a quarter inch drawer bottom. Doesn't need to be any thicker than that. You might even be able to a little bit thinner than that, but quarter inch is a good, uh, easy number to work with. So those are the five pieces that make up your drawer. Choose them carefully. You got to want them to, you want them to last a long time. Okay, first thing I want to do is fit the sides and I want to plane smooth the inside face. That'll allow me two things. Number one, to determine grain direction so that I can better choose um, which piece goes on which side. All right, that's good and smooth. Actually, there's a little plain truck right there, and you want to uh, you want to pre-finish the inside so it doesn't affect your joinery. That's flat. Okay, so if I plane that way on this side, I flip it over like that, and I plane this way. So I prefer to have it so that after you've assembled your drawer, to fit it, you plane front to back. That way, you're not planing against the end lap of that half blind dovetail and possibly knocking it off. If you're going to damage anything, it's on the back side of the drawer. So with the arrow like that, I'll orient the two pieces like this. I'm just going to put a uh, top right. Now since it's going to be number one, so I'll put one. This is the drawer we're doing up here. And this would be top left, number one. Okay. Uh, next move. We're going to go in and I want that bottom edge to be perfectly straight. And once we straighten that out, we never touch it again. All the fitting is going to be done from the top. Now, I'm going to get my big number eight. I'm going to use it as a, a reference. You'll see what I mean. This is my bottom edge. A little more blade exposed. I also want to make sure that it's staying square, so once I get it cleaned up, and I think I've got lots of room, I do, I need to remove about an eighth of an inch. I'll do that on the table saw, but I need to have that reference edge determined first. This is also the edge that we'll use to square both ends when we put it up against the fence. Okay, we're getting a complete shaving, so referencing off of that inside, which is my true face. Okay, so the shoot, the uh, plane is off. I'm taking off too much on the top side, so I've got to shift the blade so that the bottom sticks out a little farther. 
That's too heavy of a cut, but let's see what that did. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is set it on its edge like this. I don't want it pivoting in the middle. So when I set it like that and move it, it doesn't pivot in the middle. It's on both ends. I'd rather have it slightly concave than a bump. So we can set that one aside. Now, where's our marking? So this is our bottom edge down here. Check that. Square. Try it on here. Okay, see, now we're pivoting in the middle, so I don't want that. I'm going to pull the blade in a little bit. I'm going to take a section from about here to here. And then when you disengage, as long as you disengage in a forward motion, don't leave a little skin tag on there. And that'll keep that nice and clean. There's no transition mark. It was quite bad, so I'm going to do a second one. I started here, I ended about here. And now I'll take a full length pass. Run my finger over there to make sure there's no transition. And there is, so I've got to do another one. Mm, still got one. Pull the blade in a little bit more. Set that on here. Yeah, that's better, but I, st I feel just a little bit of a transition mark still. Pull the blade in just a bit more. Pull the blade in a bit more. Okay, I can live with that. So that's this side. Now, we're gonna, we've got a, enough to remove that we're gonna go over and do it on the table saw. I'm just looking at that and I'm gonna guess I'm gonna do one at a time. I don't know for a fact that they're the same on both sides. I can take more off, but I can't add it. So I'm gonna do this several times. Now what I want is to get it from the table saw so that it's tight or not, maybe not even quite fitting and finish it over here. I still have to, I have to have enough room or enough material left to get rid of those saw marks without losing the fit. So I need to take off uh, about another 16th. Make sure there's no debris. Okay, that's, that's really close. Fit this on the shooting board, and then if this one fits that side, and I bring it over and it fits that side, then I'll use the same setting on the table saw. And by the way, I'm counting the strokes, so I'll know how much to take off the other one if that's how it turns out. And make sure you have a continuous pass. So you're taking the same amount of material off and you're not changing these two edges from being parallel to each other. Okay, that's, that's just about perfect. Now there'll be a little bit of final fitting before we're done, but that's where, I, that's where I want it to be right now at this stage. Now that one's a little bit tighter, but it's close enough. As close as that was, I'm gonna use the exact same setting on the table saw. I may have to take another one, maybe two passes. That's four. Now just be sure. Six. Just a bit snug. We'll pull the blade in.
this is the uh, this is the right size we want. That fits in there just the way I want. Now we need to square up the edges, the ends. Pardon me, and we'll cut them to length as well. But I'm going to have one. I'm going to do the front one first, and this is where your accuracy of your drawer starts. These each one of these pieces has to be essentially as perfect as you can get it, and when you build your drawer, that will pay huge dividends. Make a mistake here, or even a little bit of inaccuracy here gets multiplied multiple times, and you go to put that final joint together and it doesn't work. That was why. So, using, I, I want to be able to do this with the inside face, which is going to be my reference face, down sitting down on the shooting board, that bottom edge against the fence, and that's what I'm going to square it to. Now I got to flip it around first, and cut a little chamfer. It needs to be a little bit heavier than that. And get a little more blade exposure. Okay, I'm about a quarter of an inch away. There, I stopped about a sixteenth of an inch shy. Now I'm going to go over and cut that to length. I'll get close with the, my sled on the table saw, but then I'll finish it over here. Same idea. Um, now this one, I can't lay the same way. I can't put against, but uh, the, I can't put the inside face down and have the reference edge back here against the fence. So I've got to, I've got to flip this around the other way. But the most important is that this edge be square to the bottom. So I'll end up finishing it like this, but I've got to turn it around and cut my little chamfer on the bottom, then flip it around. Now I, I neglected to check and see if that's square, so that looks good. And I'm about three of an inch away. I'm about a sixteenth of an inch away, so that's good. Okay, now we need to determine how long these drawer sides are going to be. And since we st always stop against the drawer front up here, and in this case, the drawer front actually is going to reference against this. So we don't need to worry about the drawer being any certain length. I don't want it to hit, I don't want to uh, hit against the back. So we'll come back. We'll come uh, subtract a little bit for that, but this is also going to be a half blind, and I believe the drawer fronts are designed to be flush. Yeah, we've got the material to do that. Now this being walnut, I'm going to allow for an eighth of an inch end lap. So that means that when I when I do the half blind, I don't have an example here to show you. When I do the half blind, there'll be an extra half an eighth of an inch left beyond the ends of the tails. So um, that means I'm going to measure from the very back to here, the front, and that measures 13 and 7 sixteenths. Now we're going to remove uh, an eighth of an inch for the end lap I just mentioned, and we'll take another sixteenth just to keep it from touching the back. So if that's sitting at 13 and 7 sixteenths, then we're going to go 13 and a quarter which means it's going to be 3 16 of an inch shorter than the uh, cabinet is front to back. I already forgot what I said. 13 and a quarter. Okay, so we'll go over, I'll get the sled on the table saw and we'll cut it close to that and then we'll come back over here and clean it up. And those two are going to be made perfectly, uh, exact same length. Again, that contributes to a perfect box when we build that drawer. Third. Reference edge. Now I've got the, I've got the, uh, the inside surface up just so I can get a cleaner cut. Remember, the outside is going to be planed away. Okay, this is the back. Cut a little chamfer. 
One, two, three. on there and they're nice and flush so there's our two sides done as far as we need to take them right now now this part has got to be perfect because this is where we get our fit so that there's absolutely no movement side to side with the drawer only up and down so we're going to use the back because it is a secondary wood. So if we happen to screw it up, we can get another back. Can't do that with the front. So on a normal drawer, and I'm, what I'm referring to is ones where the divider is flush with the edge, we can go in there and we would reference it right off of the bottom and we would go over and we would plane this on the shooting board until that fit perfectly. But because that's set inside on this one, I got to do a little bit differently. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm first going to prep this piece. Again, we use our bottom as the reference, but I need that to fit in the opening. And I'm actually gonna get a second piece. So that's eventually gonna be changed to be quite a bit less because once after we've <clears throat> fit it to the opening and used it as a template to transfer over onto this piece, before this actually gets built into the drawer, we've got to take enough off of the bottom to allow for the quarter inch groove that the drawer bottom sits in and <clears throat> whatever is below that. So this is going to lose quite a bit. But I do want to keep it as close to the actual opening size as possible right now in order to make this, uh, the transfer from the back to the front as close as possible. So I'm going to take that to four and a half. Okay, now that'll fit up in there, but the problem is I'm so far away from being able to reference this on the bottom that I can't really do that as accurately as I want. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to cut a piece that is the same width but shorter. So we need a piece that's going to be 15, 15 by four and a half. So this is going to be my sacrificial piece. I've labeled it top right and I've, I've straightened the bottom so that it sits no bump in the middle. Now what we're going to do is go in here and we're going to fit that side or this end to that side. And it's touching up here at the top and not at the bottom. So just check a little. Oh yeah, that's way out of square anyway. Now if the cabinet is perfectly square, then that should fit. But that's really not uh, how we do it. We make it fit regardless. Okay, now that looks pretty good, but what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier, I used to just uh, sight it and look for any light, but eyes are not what they used to be. So we'll use a shim. This is a bit extreme, but this is a half inch, a half thou shim. So I'm going to, okay, so when it's touching on the bottom, it's tight there. Now we'll try it in the middle. Not tight there. Try it in the top. And not tight there. So it slopes out just a little bit. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use my feeler gauges and this may seem like a lot of uh, a lot of fussy work but if you want them to be perfect then you got to go through it I'm going to just guess on this what is that three thou we'll use four thou just thickness of a piece of paper I'm just going to put it out here to have that stick out just that amount. Oh, wait a minute now, hold on here. We didn't clean that up. 
I've got to go over the table saw. I forgot to do that. This edge needs to be perfectly parallel to that one. Okay, now that I've got both edges parallel, it doesn't matter which one is up against the fence. My bad. So we're just going to keep this out from the uh, out from the fence just that amount. So that means we can take put a slight angle on this. Where did that little break out? And we want this to catch over the entire length. So when I push it in tight, okay, it's tight there, tight there, and tight there. That's good. So now we'll take this piece and transfer it onto this one. And I'm just looking to see which of these doesn't really matter. So this will be the inside. So I label the outside back on this. So this will be top right and it's number one. So I'll take this piece and lay it over. Now I have a special plane blade. I shouldn't say special, but it's a plane blade that I've never put a back bevel on. So the, it, it's sharp and exactly like a chisel. So what I need to do is flush these up and your thumbs can feel uh, are amazingly precise. So this is only a half a thou, and if you and I can detect the difference. So that's how tight the tolerances are on your digits. So what I'm doing is just lining these two pieces up, and then I'll hold that firmly, and laying up against this edge that we just trimmed. We'll go in and we'll score a line. Now we should be able to just do duplicate what we did over here. I'm going to get some magnifiers on so I can see this a little closer. So the first thing we want to do is cut our chamfer on the top. And I'll take it right to that mark. Okay, now we'll put this in, same spot. Now what I want to do is just look down and see if the cut I'm making, I'm going to bring that back a little bit, is parallel to that line I put on there, and it seems to be. Now as you get closer and closer, the little short fibers that have been severed by that plane blade start to crumble and it'll leave a little bit of a gap. And you can, if you learn to read that, you can get extremely precise with this. If you look right there, you can see how the little fibers have crumbled and left a little gap. So with each pass, see how that's increasing. And I eventually want to get to a point where I have that gap all the way and then I stop when I eliminate the gap. Okay, so if you look at the way that fits up against the plane, that should be exactly what we want. Our next move is to go in and get the other side. And the way we've got to do this, trusting that that is exactly fitting that side, we're going to come in here like so, but we've got to come out here in order to, if, if we do this with that in like that, this is going to give, it a, give us an inaccurate reading. We actually have to come out here and get that as close to being... We want the drawer front to be as close to being parallel to this front edge as possible. And holding that in position, we've got to get in from the back side. It's going to take a little bit of gymnastics. And we're going to lay this against the inside face and use it to score top to bottom. And then that score line should make, when we plane down to it, should make this fit perfectly. Now, I'm going to reach around. 
I've got to keep that tight the other side. So what I'm going to do, pushing this tight, this plane blade tight against the inside face, I'm going to lift it so I use the bottom corner to scribe and then I'll go up at the top and then I'll angle it so that I'm using the top corner to scribe. Let's see if we were able to see that. Okay, so there's our, there's our line. Now we should be able to plane right down to that. When I get really close, when we just start to see those little fibers break out, I'll stop and check it a few times. So I can go to the table saw and I can, I can cut within about a 30 second or so of that. Okay, that's such a light mark. I have to use these magnifiers in order to see. But we need to go up here first and cut a chamfer. A little bit deeper. Okay, that appears to be a little bit closer to the line up here, so I'm going to come in and shim that. Also going to pull the blade back so we're not taking off so much. I still have line, but I think I need to bring this back a little bit. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to try that. That's my top right. I want this to be snug. Okay, it's a little too snug at the top. So, I was, if I, Okay, I had it up too far. I'm going to pull that back. That's a two thou, half as much. Don't want to take too much. Top right. Now, that feels, that, that feels good on the bottom, but it's a little snug at the top. I'm going to turn this around. Now, if I look real close, there's a little bit of a gap right there, so I'm going to assume that that's just the amount I need to remove. Okay, I've got to get that to sit. I've got to get this bottom edge to sit on there in order to be able to tell that I'm exactly where I want to be. Okay. So that's about equally tight on both, and I'm, uh, that's good. That'll allow me just to, you know, a, half a thou shaving to get it perfect. But it's a nice fit on both sides. So this is gonna be my template. It's my back, but it's also my template for my front. Had I screwed that up and made it too short, I would just simply go grab another piece of poplar and do another one until I was satisfied. But now that I've got it, I can come in here, I can prepare my front, and we'll show you how we do that. So 
this is going to be the outside. So we'll go ahead and label that. This is the top right number one. So our bottom edge is the one that's always critical. Although this one's going to be a little bit different because the bottom edge is actually going to sit down here. But we'll adjust that a little bit afterwards. And for right now, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and use it as my reference as I typically would. Come on now, it's skipping on me. Check that for being nice and straight. Make sure there's no debris on there. Pivoting in the middle, so. What I typically do is go from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here. Once I've done that, and I know I've hollowed it out a little bit, then I'll come in and make a full length pass. Feel for any transition marks, and I don't have any. Set that on there and check it. Still have it. Go ahead and do it again. Now, a couple of full length passes. Check. That's pretty good. Okay, this is the front. So I mark the front, or I should say the outside of my drawer front. I mark the back, the, out, the, the outside of my drawer back. So that's how they're gonna sit in the drawer. So what I'm going to do is line them up like this. I just got a piece of masking tape on here I wanna get off. This is about a quarter of an inch longer than it needs to be. So line those up. And I, I get this to a point where I can no longer tell by hand or eye that it could be improved. And that feels flush both sides. I can't go all the way out, but I can at least get a good start. And with this blade, I can reach out a little bit. And I'll go out there maybe a little bit. Multiple light passes usually result in a better job than trying to do it once with a heavy pass. Okay, now we'll go over to the table saw and we'll trim both of these close to the line and then come back and just Work our magic with the shooting board. Yep. All right, first thing I want to do is check and see how much I have. So I'm going to trim that back. Again, I need that parallel, opposite edge to be parallel. So if I cut that five, five and a strong three eighths, I'll be okay. Get a 
red pen. Hopefully I can see that a little bit better. There. Now we'll just go in here and trim this back. We've got to cut our chamfer up here first. Check that for square. You can usually tell by this line that should have stopped right straight or right perpendicular instead of being on a slope like that. So I'm cutting more on the top less than the bottom. So what I just did is I adjusted my blade by pulling up on the lateral adjustment lever and that takes the blade down like that so now it'll make a heavier cut on the bottom. It's a little straighter. Go a little bit more. I also want to pull that in. Take a little lighter cut. And take a look at where I am with my line. So now that mark is right there, which means it still needs to be corrected a bit more. Although that's not detectable, so I'm gonna let it be. Now I'm gonna go in and I've gotta extend my chamfer, pull the board out from the edge. So allow me to take off a little bit more and really get close to that line. Okay, as I look at that, uh, I think I'm a little bit closer to my line up here than I am back here, but not by much. So again, I'll shim it a very small amount. Now have a real close look at this. And you can usually see the little severed edge, uh, the clean cut edge right up there where the knife blade went in. And I don't see any part of the knife blade left, so I'm going to call that good. Actually, what I'll do is put my, my back on there again. Line up, flush up the bottom. That feels really good. That's that's uh, I, that feels flush all the way. So that's good. Now we'll do this edge. Now let's just check this. Okay, I'm still proud, which is good because that's what the line was telling me. Another. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'll check this one last time. Oh, this is this is literally one pass too heavy. <clears throat> Thank you.
Okay, that feels right on. So the last thing to do with the uh, front and the back is to plane the inside surface. So that's going to be this one on the drawer back. This is particularly true because the, the back and the front house the pins of the dovetail. And if you change their shape, meaning plane this after you've cut the joint, then you'll end up with pins that are too narrow at the base and it'll throw off your joint. So this has to be done before. Retract that blade. Make sure it's flat. Okay, that one's done. So that back is ready for dovetails. And now we'll do the same thing with the front. A you know, little bit of a plain track right there. Check that for flat. Now, the fifth piece of our drawer is the bottom, but we reserve that for after we've assembled everything and we'll make it fit exactly. So this is the first part of our drawer making series. You'll want to catch the rest of it. Very detailed, very precise operation, but so satisfying when that drawer fits just perfectly. Hi, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.